In this video, you are going to learn some advanced postman techniques. Now, if you're anything like me, that last video probably drove you mad. We were copying around X auth values and to do IDs. It's a real cumbersome process. There is a better way to do things. What we're going to do instead is use environment variables. When we issue sign up or login requests, we're going to grab that X auth header and set it equal to an environment variable. So instead of having to update every X auth header for every request, we can simply provide the environment variable and it's automatically going to get updated. As we log in with a new account, the XAuth environment variable will get updated and we can use it in any of the other requests. Now, in order to get that done and explain exactly how it's going to work, I am going to close all of my tabs, not saving any of them. And we're going to get started by updating the sign up call. Now the signup call is going to get an X auth token back. This is going to come back like it has for all of our other requests. I'm going to create a user Andrew 10 at example.com right here. We get our header back and this is what we want to set as the value for the environment variable and postman gives us a way to do that. To do that, we're going to go into this tests section. The tests section is a little place where we can run some code after a request comes back. You could use this to verify that the request worked as expected. In our case, we have a test suite that does that for us. Instead, we're going to use this little tests text area to manage some environment variables. Now on the right hand side, Postman has a fantastic set of snippets to get you started. What we're going to do is write two lines. We're going to write two lines that one fetch the token and two set the token equal to an environment variable. Now, currently our to do app Heroku environment has one environment variable, depending on the version of Postman, you can view that by either going here and clicking manage environments, or in my case, simply clicking this little preview icon. One of these three things should be the location for your version of Postman. Right here, I have the URL environment variable. What we're going to do is add an X auth environment variable. Now, first up, we're going to make a variable called token, sending an equal to the response header. We can get that using postman and postman, which is an object, has a bunch of awesome utility methods we can use to manipulate things inside of our tests text area. We're going to use the get response header method. Get response header takes the name of the header whose value you want to fetch. We're going to fetch the X auth header value. Then we're going to go ahead and set the environment variable using postman dot set environment variable passing in two arguments. The first one is the name of the environment variable to set. I'm going to call mine X auth, which matches up with the header name. And the second is the value you want to set. We have that stored under the token variable. And with this in place, we are done. We can now save this request and issue it off by creating a new user. I'm going to change 10 to 11, send this off. And when we send it, things look pretty similar. We still get our X auth token in the headers and our body still looks correct with a 200 status. The difference now is that inside of our environment, we have an X auth environment variable. This is the token that just came back, which means we can use this elsewhere in our code to make the private requests a lot easier to send off. For example, get to do's get to do's currently fails. It is going to require an X auth header. Previously, we had to copy that value every time. Instead, we can simply reference the environment variable, opening and closing two sets of curly braces and putting the environment variable name right inside. Now we can issue this request without ever needing to actually copy a value, which means we don't need to change the request every time. We just click it, click send, and we get the data back. Now this is fantastic. We have this saved. I'm going to save it again, updating the body. Now we can go ahead and copy the exact same two lines to the login request. Remember both sign up and login. They are both going to get an X auth token back. I'm going to save this one, send it off. And now we have a new X auth value already in the environment. This is the new token value that just came back. With this in place, we can now update all of our private requests, just like we did to get to do's right here. We set X auth equal to X auth. We're going to do the same thing for post to do's X hyphen auth is going to equal the X auth environment variable. Then we can save this one. We can move on to get to do by ID, 
setting x hyphen auth equal to the x auth environment variable. We have the same thing for delete to do's down below. x auth equals the x auth environment variable. And we're going to keep moving down the list. Patch is up next. x auth and x auth. Next up after that one is the get users me. This one already has the x auth header defined. I just need to update the value. And finally, we have our logout request. Right here, we're going to swap out the token value with the x auth environment variable. Now we will never need to do that again. Anytime we want to make a private request, all we do is we click the route, we send it off, and we get the data back. Now this works great with x auth. I also want to do the exact same thing for the to do ID value we've been passing around. Ideally, the default value would just be the last to do created. And we can add that functionality by changing the post to do's route. Right here, we have our tests section. And what we're going to do is grab the ID from the response body. And we're going to set that equal to an environment variable, just like we did with x auth. Then we'll be able to use that environment variable inside of the URL right here. Inside of post to do's, what we're going to do first is grab the body by creating a variable called body. And we are going to need to call json.parse to take the JSON value and convert it into a JavaScript object. Now, Postman is going to give you access to the JSON response via response body. Excellent. Now that we have our body object, we can go ahead and call set environment variable once again, postman.set environment variable, passing in our values. A good name for this one would be to do ID, and we're going to set it equal to body dot underscore ID, which is where that property is located. Now I can go ahead and save this request and we can fire it off. Take a moment to notice that you do not have a to do ID environment variable. When you send it off and you go back to the same screen, you now do have a to do ID variable. It's the exact same ID we have right here. It ends in 4.6 down below and it ends in 4.6 right there. Now we can go ahead and update the to do routes that require an ID by simply taking the ID portion of the URL and swapping it out for the environment variable. To do ID, just like this, for our get to do's by ID request. I'm going to save it and send it off. And right here, we get the to do we just created. We can also do the same thing for patch. I'm going to update delete last. Right here, we're going to swap out the ID with to do ID, save it, send it off. And now we have a to do where the status is completed and the completed at property has a timestamp. Last up is the delete route. I'm going to swap out the ID with the to do ID environment variable, save it and send it off. Now the to do has been deleted and we could still issue our other requests, but they're not going to work as expected. Here we try to get a to do that was deleted. So we get a 404, but that's fine. We now have a much easier system for managing our requests. And the same thing is going to work locally automatically. I'm going to switch from to do app Heroku to to do app local. I am going to need to start up my server over in the terminal node server forward slash server JS is going to get that server up and running. And inside of robo mongo, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the local collections. In here, we have our to do app database, I can simply drop it. And then we can go into postman and fire off a few requests. Over inside of postman, we'll get started by creating a user. I'm going to create a user and automatically everything is already working as expected. We have our X auth header sitting right here and we don't need to copy the value from the response header. We can move right to get to do's issue that request and we can see we have no to do's. That's fine. Let's go ahead and create one by clicking it and clicking send. Now we have a to do and now the to do ID is also populated. From here, we can go ahead and get the individual to do returning the to do based off the environment variable. We could update it just like we did for Heroku. We can delete it just like we did for Heroku. And we can also manage the user. We can get the user based off of the X auth token. And finally, to wrap things up, we can go ahead and log out the user. Now the private requests are going to fail because the X auth token that's provided, the one that's still in the environment variable, it has been wiped from the database. So we're going to get a 401 unauthorized. Now we did the same thing for login. Login is also going to set an X auth token, which means if we log in with a proper body, 
The current body is andrew at example.com, but the user I created was andrew11. I'm going to go ahead and log in as andrew11, saving the route. Now the XAuth token is properly updated. We can make a request like this and it works as expected. With this in place, we are done. We have a much better system for managing our routes inside of Postman. Instead of needing to copy around to do ID values and X auth tokens, we can simply use environment variables to get the job done. I highly recommend configuring this sort of setup for any API you're gonna create down the line. It takes just a few minutes to set up initially, but it makes life so much easier when it comes to testing and issuing all of the requests you have saved in your collections. That is it for the bonus video. I will see you in the next section.